Um, so our first guest, who I have the privilege of interviewing, is Mr. Del Bigtree. Del Bigtree is one of the world's preeminent voices of the vaccine risk awareness movement. He is the founder of the nonprofit Informed Consent Action Network and the host of the breakout internet talk show, The High Wire. It's the fastest growing program in the natural health arena with over 100 million views. Dell's career as an Emmy winning producer of the CBS talk show, The Doctors, changed profoundly when he produced the documentary, Vaxxed, from cover up to catastrophe. Since its release, the film is credited with igniting a revolution against pharmaceutical tyranny around the world. Dell's nonprofit, the Informed Consent Action Network, or ICANN, is leading nationwide investigations into drug and vaccine fraud that have already resulted in multiple winning lawsuits against the U.S. government agencies, Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health, CDC, and FDA. Let's take a minute and take a look back at Dell in Trenton here in 2019 and 2020. You guys hear me back there? The head of the police force here said in 20 years, I have never seen this many people show up for any issue there has ever been. Every single one of you is a leader and every one of you is my hero. Thank you for being here. All of you and your beautiful children, we need to stay strong, we need to stay loud. Inside, think about what's happening. This is a resounding, powerful, vocal prayer to the people inside here. You are standing up for every religion and the freedom of religion in this nation right now. An amendment to the bill last week, last Thursday, and that amendment essentially said, okay, we'll allow private schools to take unvaccinated children. Well, really then that becomes a class war. That means that only people that can afford to be in a private school can opt out of the vaccine program. At some point, they're gonna have to vote. And until that moment happens, we're not going away. 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 There you have it, victory in Trenton, New Jersey. The Battle of New Jersey and Trenton has been won once again. History has been made. The high wire was here with no one else. All of these people, all of these beautiful people stood together as a family, together, making a difference. Let it be known to every politician in this country that went down in Trenton, in the belly of the beast, we have won. This is our time. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? So powerful. Welcome, Dal. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being with us tonight to commemorate the third anniversary of the Battle of Trenton. We're so excited to have you here with us to take a look back at our I mean, win. It's really hard not to get emotional, I'll be honest with you. It's one of the truly amazing miracles that's happened in my experience in, in this conversation, in this battle that we continue to find ourselves in in many battles. That goes down as one of the really, and I think it was a turning point for this country when you think what came behind it. Um, and we continue to be victorious in many ways, but Trenton made it possible, made it possible for us to believe that people still had a voice. I think we were on the verge of thinking that politics was just gonna run away. The whole thing was rigged and the people showed up in such resounding numbers. And I, I'll just never forget standing on that little precipice there and Mary Holland who you know isn't with us tonight but stood there right next to me and Jimmy my manager I mean I, I don't think I was able to actually speak for three or four days nor anyone in that audience we did not stop um, and I and I I can only say it felt like uh, I imagine what we felt that night was what it feels like to win the World Series or the Super Bowl 
for people that are invested and spend their lives with a dream, you know, that dream of making a difference and standing together. It will, I'll never forget it. Yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful. And seeing these videos really brings back a lot of emotions for all yeah. of us. And we really wanted to create this event and to bring you on to really remind everyone of our victory, but also to activate them, to help them understand that this battle is never over. It's a marathon and we have to stay vigilant always because bills are being passed and moved every day. So I want to ask you, in, to your point about things changing after um, our battle in 2020, in thinking about our time in Trenton, can you share with us like a specific favorite memory that you have? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, obviously, the the the, the favorite mem memory is the moment where we, you know, were chanting, and then what was wild was I was looking at the audience, so everyone started cheering at a certain point, but I didn't see that behind me, you know, up in the glass, you know. We had, uh, I believe, it was Michael Sarnoff was up there just saying, you know, it's it's dead. The, the bill has been killed, but really the whole day, um, you know, and and honestly, I had been out there. I think I think I was out there twice. Uh, Bobby Kennedy and I, because at that time, you know, we were, you know, we were both trying to make as big an impact, but our schedules were so packed. So I'd be Bobby's like, I can make this date. It's like, how about you take that one? And so we were like tag teaming every time there was going to be another vote or something, trying to send someone out uh, so that we could make sure that we just kept the pressure. And, and I guess in some ways I got the luck of the draw that I got the night uh, where we, we, we got to just bring home the victory. But, you know, some of my favorite memories are of the, the speeches during the day, you know, and and what I think honestly was a, you know, a turning point. And, and you got... You know, you got Jamel Hawley that is, is going to be speaking, which is, you know, honestly, when anyone says that this is a political issue, you have one of the great Democrats of our time that stand on our side. He's not alone. Bobby Kennedy, who we're talking about, I think will still say that he relates to himself as a Democrat. We got Michael Testa, who is in there fighting. But beyond that, you know, that in that evening, I would say there was seven or eight different politicians, some that were going to be running for office, some that were inside coming out literally to stump to this audience of, I don't know what our, what was our final tally? Somewhere between 10,000 and 20,000 people. I think the police were saying, um, and I believe that beyond just winning it, that was the first time we saw politicians recognizing that this was an audience of voters that I need. And I think the Battle of Trenton, perhaps one of the, the biggest, most powerful shifts was I believe that day, this issue that we became a voting block. We were no longer just, you know, some, as, as Sweeney tried to describe it right, you know, um, outraged mothers banging drums. Um, we became a force to be reckoned with and politicians started realizing, smart ones, I better get on the right side of this path or I, I can't make it. Um, I think that, you know, I look right now, I look at where Donald Trump is at. I think he's forgotten that I don't believe without us that, you know, in, in this movement, people like that win office. Uh, we are, and they're now saying it. They now recognize how powerful uh, this movement has become. When, when I, you know, we, and you can ask me questions. When we look at where we're at with COVID, which is another conversation, all of the, all of the polls are now showing the power. I think that this poll that just came out, uh, Rasmussen poll, you know, with one in four saying that they they know somebody that has been killed by the vaccine. Uh, when you look at the poll out of Iowa, that only I think is thirty six percent of Iowa voters believe that a vaccine should be mandated on children. Only thirty six percent. Uh, that means we have become, I think, this conversation and certainly the sim simple side of this, which is the right to choose, the right to body autonomy, decide what happens to my body. Um, that may have seemed to them to be an outrageous thought, but we are now the majority uh, of the population of America. And I believe a silent majority around the world. All that we have to do now is get this majority to start speaking out the way we did in Trenton, to start standing up and not being afraid to state who we are. 
Um, if we were able to do that right now, resoundingly around, around the world, I believe we end all of this probably tomorrow. In, in every next election, this is over. They've gotten away with making us afraid to speak out. Trenton showed the power of humanity, the power of the human voice. Uh, and it, it has begun. I mean, it really was a transitional moment for the movement, as I said, into the politics of this conversation. And we showed uh, by those politicians stepping forward. And, and since then, more and more, everywhere I go, more and more politicians, the rally in Los Angeles, there was a line like we had to limit. We had to say, look, we can't have this many politicians speaking. It's not about you. That is what's became Trenton uh, started all yes. of Yes, for sure. Absolutely. And to your point about us becoming a voting block, and that's exactly why we formed this political action committee, because we want to have a presence in Trenton, in the halls of Trenton, um, to cultivate relationships with legislators, to help them understand our issue. What I often tell advocates is that we are the experts on this issue, and we can't think that the legislators are going to know what we know or read what we read so that impetus is, is on, upon us to do that, to educate them and inform them. And with the PAC, um, we've been able to create relationships and become a force. And we're a bipartisan PAC. Um, we talk to both sides of the aisle and we're able to produce a um, voter's guide that will help parents in the state of New Jersey understand who they're voting for and that they support health freedom. So it's- Well, there's really two points I, I just wanna just yeah. follow up there. Um, something that Senator Ron Johnson said to me um, privately, and may maybe he said it uh, when I was interviewing him, but he's made it clear to me. He says, you know, a lot of you talk about the amount of money that funds out you know, from the lobby of, of pharma into politicians. He's like, I will be honest with you, Dell, that is not the issue. I don't get that much money. They're there, sure, but they're limited. And the money we get as senators and congressmen does not make a difference. It is not what is making our decisions. What is making our decisions is that lobby that comes into my office all the time and speaks to me. Every time there's a medical conversation, every time they are sending in doctors to tell me what, you know, I'm supposed to be think health department people like that is like the door. It's just, they're constantly coming through the door. And that's why what you're doing is so important. We it's not that we don't have the funding. We are not, you know, and because of PACs like yours in the ship, we are changing that. But that ability and the people that are funding you to send people on a constant basis, as you said, to educate these politicians, that's the game changer. We didn't have a voice inside of these offices. We were angry at politicians that just simply don't know what the conversations are about, don't understand the science around it, are being told there's only one way to see this. And so it is so important now that PACs like yours, that is how we compete in the space. That is how we take what is now a voting block and we start making these politicians understand what our demands are, what they're going to have to do and what they're going to have to understand. So it's really critical. So we don't really have to think of how do we raise billions of dollars to buy politicians. We have to raise enough money to take people like yourselves that are dedicated in you know every state uh, in this country and keep them in the offices of these politicians to start refuting the lies that are coming from the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, because they're watching mainstream media, our legislators. And really, we need to be the bridge to the high wire for them. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, we have relationships with a lot of legislators where we can just text over, um, you know, a segment from your show. That's so great. thank you for all you're doing, you know, to help make it easy for us to educate and inform our legislators. You're welcome. Thank you for using that tool. That's what it's there for. Yeah, no, it's incredible. So now in 2023, how do you propose that we activate advocates, parents, Americans to continue to protect and preserve health freedom here in the US and worldwide? Well, look, I think you have an advantage now that you didn't even have then, and that is this COVID disaster. This, this COVID vaccine um, has enrolled an incredible amount of people into this conversation. And I think politicians uh, on both sides of the aisle, whether they admit it or not, in many ways are waking up to the horrors of not having control. So much of the backtracking by the CDC and the FDA, and you have to understand these regulatory agencies that they used to look up to have an all time low in confidence um, and even more so amongst the people. And we have got to just use this moment to 
continue to grow this movement because what, and this is what I'm saying in the end, politicians will, you know, they don't move until the people move. And so there's been a lot of work to try and get politicians to do things 10 years ago. You couldn't do what we can do now. Um, but it is really incumbent on every one of us to be vocal, to keep enrolling new people into this movement. So the next time we have to stand outside of the castle or the cathedral or, you know, the state, uh, the state house, the, what we're talking about is we need enough people standing there that it makes a difference. That's what the Battle of Trenton truly proved. That was enough people. If that was 200 people, you don't win it. I just don't think you do. I think, you know, when you could hear, and I loved when we were like, when we knew Sweeney was talking to someone inside of the, the whole dynamic, we had people on cell phones, you know, Sweeney's talking to Lagana right now. And so we were like, you know, let's start chanting, God bless Lagana. Can you imagine hearing your name being shouted by 10,000 people that's rumbling the walls around you? Um, it was such a powerful spectacle. But it is what we are driving towards. One day, that moment is probably going to have to happen in D.C. It's going to be happening in, in state capitals uh, across the country. And it is really important that each one of us continues to build this army for truth because the politics won't move. The people are not demanding it. So that is really and, – and everywhere I go, every – Think Tank, I was just in one last week. We had a great meeting in Orlando bringing together a lot of the different organizations. But I said, in the end, this is still about the court of public opinion. We can win in the courtroom and we can try and move legislators. But until we have enough people to really make our demands and know that they have got to listen to us, we're getting there, we're growing. But that's what each person that is not, you know, walking into the senator and speaking or working for your, your PAC, what they can do is enroll more and more people, get more and more people watching the high wire, get more and more people funding the work that you're doing, but continuing to grow this movement. Um, there, I, I don't think, I mean, clearly the, that is one battle, battle trend, the battle for the COVID vaccine. Um, these are just battles in a much bigger war that includes so many other conversations that we're having on the high wire now. Um, but I believe there is going to be a pinnacle moment, a moment of, you know, real, um, that's going to demand all of us. And whenever that moment comes, it will be decided if we were strong enough. And so that is what I think we have to be preparing for. So powerful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with here uh, with us tonight, Dell. We'll have you back on later with your okay. pals from Trenton. Um, I'm going to pass it over the microphone now to Lori.